Today, we are going to discuss when it is appropriate and good to bluff off your entire stack with three players remaining in a tournament at the final table. Something most people never do. They're chicken, they're scared, but there actually are times to do it. And if you do not, you are leaving substantial money on the table. But before we get started, I have a request for you. Y'all may not know this, but you voted me 2019 GPI People's Choice Poker Personality of the Year. Presumably thanks to all of the content I make here for you. And voting is open again. You have to actually go there and write in my name, Jonathan Little. If you want me to have a shot to win it again, I would appreciate it. You all know I'm here working hard every day to improve your poker skill, to help you enjoy poker a little bit more, and to maybe even entertain you a little bit. And if I've helped you over the last year, I would definitely appreciate your vote. You can head over to pokercoaching.com slash vote to vote right now. I would appreciate it. We'll put a link in the description below so that you can go right there and spread some love to me. I appreciate it. Let's take a look at this hand from the GG Millions, a $10,000 buy-in tournament that takes place every week on GG Poker. As you can see, we are down to three players with all pretty equal stacks, which is something you do not actually see all that often at final tables. Usually someone's a clear chip leader or there's one really short stack. But here, the players have to get in there and they have to battle a little bit. This player in second place, the middle stack can't just sit here and blind out. So we should expect decently active play here while the players are still not going to be like insane trying to move up the payout ladder because or try to, to get a hold of a big chip stack because right now you don't really want to be the next one out it's a pretty big disaster so let's take a look at this hand where ool presumably means out of line raises it up to 352,000 playing 80,000 160,000 and then Bazoka does put in the three bet to 1.5 4 million. We're playing about 8.6 million chips deep. So this is a spot where I definitely don't think three betting is mandatory. I think you're usually going to see that you want to be three betting with a lot of the ace X blocker type hands, but whatever. We three bet the jack 10 suited. Sure. And then OOL with the king queen has no real option besides to call. I realize that it's kind of dicey to call with king queen in the spot because you are going to be dominated by ace king and ace queen a lot. But if your opponent's 3-betting decently often, then whatever. You, you absolutely cannot fold this. You also don't want to 4-bet it because if you think about the stack depth here, if we 4-bet to, let's say, 3.3 million and get shoved on, well, now we're getting about 2-to-1 pot odds to call off in a spot where we're probably going to win about 38 or 40-something percent of the time, which is not particularly great. So we don't really want to put in the 4-bet with this hand. Our only options, in my mind, are to call, fold, or shove. I think shoving is probably a little bit optimistic as well, because when you get called, you're usually going to be in pretty terrible shape, which is not where you want to be. Folding seems weak, so call. See the flop. Here we go. Come on, OOL. Let's go. Let's see the flop. Flop comes. Jack-10-2, giving OOL over cards. Open into straight draw, backdoor flush draw, and Fizoka, top two pair. This is definitely a spot to make a continuation bet. Pot is 3 million. So at this point, Fazoka really wants to be concerned with how do I get my stack in by the river. It's very, 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 very important that you do not bet too big on the flop because if you bet too big on the flop, you're going to make your opponent fold out a lot of their junkier hands that may decide to stick around if you bet tiny. Because right here, you really do want your opponent in. That said, this board should connect very well with OOL's range. Because if you think about which hands are going to raise the button and call a 3-bet, it's going to be a lot of middle connected cards, right? So I think Vizoka may be able to get away with a slightly bigger bet. Um, he doesn't really need to bet bigger to build the pot because the pot's already big, right? If he bets any amount on the flop, he's going to have a little bit more than a pot size bet going to the turn. So it's going to be easy enough to get it in by the river. But I do think there's a decent amount of merit in just making the pot bigger immediately, getting additional value. And you may induce your opponent to shove, which would be great. Whenever you bet 800k into the 3 million pot like he does... I don't think you're going to get shoved on all that often. And, and you really do want to get shoved on in this spot because you're clear favorite, right? He does go for 845k though, 846k. And now OOL, I think, has a pretty easy call. If you raise and get jammed, you're not in great shape. I realize we have overcards in a straight draw, so it's not like it's miserably bad to get it in or anything. But uh, you, the problem is you're running into some really good hands here that are obviously never folding, like aces, kings, queens, ace, jack, 
Jack 10, Jacks 10s, right? All these hands are well within your opponent's range. Now, if you think Fizoka does have a lot of hands like Ace, King, and Ace, Queen, maybe, maybe we should even fold preflop. But if you do think you have a lot of Ace, King, and Ace, Queen, then I suppose there is some merit in ripping it all in because maybe you can get those to fold. But whenever you have the King, Queen in your hand, you're blocking those, right? Which makes it more likely your opponent does have a jack or aces, right? So this is a spot where I think you just call, take your good pot odds, and hope to spike on the turn. OOL is going to give it a little bit of thought. And call. Turn's now a jack. What should Fizoka do? Pot is 4.7 million with 6.2 million chips behind. Take a second. Think about this spot. Should Fizoka check? Looking to check raise all in. Should he check, looking to check call? Should he bet small, like 1 million into the 4.7 million pot? Bet medium, like 3 million, or rip it all in? Take a second, pause the video, and write what you would do in the comment section below. All right, definitely an interesting spot where I think the best viable options here are to either check, looking to check call to give OOL every possible opportunity to bluff with whatever bluffs they have, or to bet small, like a million, a really, really small bet. I do not like check raising all in because when you check raise all in, OOL is going to fold all their bluffs, which is terrible, right? And if you bet big, like three million, OOL is also going to fold a lot of their nonsense, like... Ace five of hearts. They would have floated the flop and is now sitting here on the turn with the ace high, right? So you really, really, really want to keep OOL in the pot with all their garbage. Now, when OOL has a hand like aces or ace jack, you're going to stack them anyway, so you don't really care about those hands. Your main concern is how do I get my opponent to put all their money in with ace high or king high or some total nonsense? And the way you do that is either by betting small or by checking. I think either of those plays are fine, reasonable options. Vizoka does check, and now this is where I think OOL has to make a decision. Either OOL should bet small on the turn and then jam the river, or should just check it back and give up on the hand. When Vizoka checks the turn, it's a tough spot because if Vizoka is protecting their range decently well with hands like a jack and aces, well then you have to be very careful bluffing off because you're just going to get check called down a lot. But I think most people play this spot incorrectly. I think a lot of people, if they have a jack or pocket aces or kings or queens, they're just going to keep betting. So when most people check, I think most people are going to have the ace high in this scenario. So if most people have mostly ace high or just some nonsense like king five suited, which, you know, you're ahead of with a king queen, but you don't really care if you make it fold because if it goes check, check, and then they bluff the river, you have to fold. Uh, this is a spot where I definitely think a small bet is fine. You're going to get called by ace, king, and ace, queen every time. You're going to get called by stuff like 10-9 suited if your opponent has it every time. You may even get called by, like, pocket nines if your opponent has it every time. But then they're going to fold all those out if you jam the river, I think. So, either let it go check, check, and give up, or bet small, look into jam river. I think those are the only viable options here. Uh, you may say, why not jam it immediately on the turn? You might be able to get ace-king to fold right now. The thing is that if you jam it on the turn, yeah, you may get ace-king and ace-queen to fold, which you block. But again, you're literally always getting called by the... Um, the hands that beat the, the uh, pairs and the, what am I saying? <laughs> Aces and kings and queens and the jacks and maybe even a 10. I know a lot of people here on YouTube script their videos. They know what they're going to say ahead of time. You may not believe this. I don't script any of these videos. I literally have no clue what I'm going to say ahead of time. <laughs> I wing it. I wing everything. That's how I make so much content. All right. OOL does go for the small bet. One point. 2 million. I think this is fine. And Fizoka just has to call. It's kind of annoying here because if OL is betting with a hand like ace 10, you're not going to get value on the river most likely because it's going to go check, check. And, you know, if you do check shove here, maybe you get called. But you have to think about what OL's range looks like at this point. It's just going to be a whole lot of ace highs that are, you know, just trying to make a cheap bluff that will potentially go for it on the river. So you must call here. You must slow play to do everything you can to keep your opponent in the pot. River's a six of spades, which is Great, because if you think about OOL's range, it's going to be a lot of flushes, which are definitely going to value bet the river. It's going to be some jacks, which will still value bet the river. 
And it's going to be a lot of busted draws, like king-queen, maybe like queen-nine suited, maybe like, um, you know, whatever, random ace X of hearts that decided to go for it on the turn. And all of these hands are going to go for it on the river. Now, OOL's in a spot where I actually think his range is going to be kind of bluff-heavy. If you think about it, I mean, I just listed a whole lot of potential bluffs. Um, that said, if OL does have a lot of flush, flushes, then I think it's probably fine to bluff with a lot of hands in this scenario. This is a spot as well where I do think it's probably okay to overbluff in general because your opponent's going to have to overfold due to the very, very big ICM concerns. So this is a spot where if you were to slot me into OL shoes, I would be bluffing with the vast majority of hands I could even potentially have. I mean, I realize when you have king-queen, you're blocking like ace-king and ace-queen, which are hands you're going to get to fold most of the time. But I think you just got to go for it. I like the way OL played the hand. Assuming he goes for it. Is he going to go for it? I already spoiled that one for you. But yeah, you got to go for it here. I see no other option. Sometimes it's right to bluff it off. And this uh, is a spot where OOL is, well, OOL, but not OOL at the same time. And it's not going to work out because the uh, Jack-10 scoop loops all the money. And Fazoka takes a giant chip lead into heads-up play. Interesting spot. I think a lot of people in OOL shoes would run this bluff, thinking it's good in real time, and then would start second-guessing themselves and wonder, did I really play this hand well? Man, I just gave away all of my chips, three-handed at the final table. I gave them away. But in reality, if you just make a good, strong play and it doesn't work out, there's not a whole lot you can do. And even if your opponent announced, I'm going to slow play my full houses in this spot, you should still probably go for it because they're going to have a whole lot of ace highs and pairs, like a 10 or under pairs, that you will be able to make fold with the all-in. So... Unlucky spot for OL, and uh, good spot for Vizoka, and a very good slow play. Notice, if Vizoka bet the turn and then jammed the river, he would not have gotten paid. But by checking, he got full value with the full house. So that's going to be it for today. Before you leave, if you've not already, head over to pokercoaching.com slash vote. I would really appreciate your vote for the people's choice for the poker personality of the year. It's up to you who wins. So um, if you appreciate my work here and my channel, this content, I would appreciate your vote. Now, obviously, if you don't think I deserve it, go vote for someone else. Get in there. Get active in the community. Maybe we'll end up with another one of these very, very soon. Thanks for being here. Good luck in your games. And I'll talk to you next time.